Hey world, welcome to another edition of Tandem Tactics Podcast. I am Dan Brown, here with a couple of friends. I'm still Garrett. I'm Nick. I'm playing Selvala, Explorer Returned. It's been featured on the podcast already. It was an Enchantress build that we featured, though, when Garrett right. played it. And yours is uh, different. Very not Enchantress. <laughs> uh, this build really just wants to power out Sovala as quickly as possible. You'll generate a lot of card advantage, hopefully, and overpower your opponents with lots more mana, more life, and hopefully some combos to finish it out. Would it be fair to call it um, Selesnia good stuff? Ish. Uh, there's a lot of cards that just untap your whole team, so okay. I wouldn't say exactly that. There are some good stuff cards, but a lot of it is utility with Selvala specifically. So, so the idea is built around kind of using Selvala multiple times on the same turn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and you assume that you are the best prepared to deal with the parlay, because you are feeding your opponent's cards every yeah. time you do that. The idea, hopefully, is that on a turn when I can untap Selvala four or five times, I've generated so much more mana that I'm going to be able to go off way sooner with a huge board or a combo just right out of the gate, and hopefully no one can respond. Well, speaking of decks that are looking to explode to victory out of nowhere, uh, you're playing, what, red-green? Yeah, so I'm playing a different version of Omnath, uh, Omnath, Omnath Locus of Rage. My build is a pretty typical landfall build so uh play lands when omnaths in play makes tokens the tokens hopefully generate more advantage i draw cards i do damage something when they enter the battlefield and in the end to attack for lethal yeah omnath locus of rage is one of those commanders you can just kind of read his text and y- you know what the basic game plan is there are going to be variations on the theme but yeah. give them haste make a lot of them Swing. And I am playing Ororo. I uh, made a tech deck deck tech. I did a deck tech about the deck uh, earlier this week. And it's just kind of mid-range fatties with a lot of removal. We're in Esper colors, white, blue, black, just the best colors for, you know, instant speed answers or, you know, mass removal. Although we do a little less of that because um, we are playing mid-range. So it it's the deck of mine that plays the most like a standard deck or a sealed deck. It's just a very normal, quote normal, right, game of magic um, yeah, removal spells, mana rocks, fatties, card draw. call this Esper good stuff? <laughs> this, you know, pretty close to it. I think the mid-range, yeah. the mid-range might be a little of a diversion from what would be maybe strictly the best, although that's always, you know, metagame dependent. I think many people when they play Alora or just Esper colors generally are going more of a combo route. And so the whole idea for me was I always play combo and I want to push myself in a different direction. So, I mean, I think the deck is competitive, but... Uh, it, it, it's yes, it's not it's not a combo. It's more conservative than that. So. Um, I didn't watch the deck tech again, so I uh, <laughs> Good. hopefully won't get hit with any um, too big. Well, it was just published yesterday, so you get a little more of a pass. Here, you right? can imagine psych rips abound. Anyway, you guys want to roll to see who goes first? Yeah, let's do it. I got, sure. I got a little d twenty here. We're gonna roll it on the floor so as not to mess up the audio. <laughs> uh, that's a twenty, right? Yep. I just rolled a twenty. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and I did not roll that's a twenty. That's an eight. I think I can beat a twenty. You can't beat it. Nope. <laughs> I've won every... We play, we play, full disclosure, we played a few warm-up games. I've gone first every time. Ah, let's do it! Let's do it! <laughs> well, that was... Uh, it, we always do this. We always finish the game, and then we come back, and we're just, like, rattled. <laughs> we're, like... <laughs> I've seen <laughs> things. <laughs> it's, it's, this yeah. one, though, I think was particularly bad. Like, it was just so... Uh, how many hours? That was... Well, because we're taking notes, the pace of the game is a lot slower. And we have to take... You know, we have to take note of everything, so it takes longer to, you know, make the decisions also. So... Bearing that in mind, it was it was like a three-hour game. Yeah, but nonetheless, it was still ten turns. I think also initially we were taking a lot of notes and stopping the turn. And once we got to turn six, it was like, I'll take my whole turn, then take some notes while you guys do your turn. Well, th- this might be a relic of being a noob. At this. I am a noob. <laughs> you are new to the podcast. So you, you haven't had to take notes before. Garrett and I are starting to streamline it a little bit anyway. I'm but, learning. Uh, I went first as... Our viewers just heard a minute ago uh, when we rolled the die for priority there. If only. Uh, <laughs> my opening hand was a swamp, an exotic orchard, a hallowed fountain, mystical teachings, sword of vengeance, sword of the animist, and rapid hybridization. Yeah, it's, it's a fine hand. Like, the deck is designed to be pretty conservative. We're not looking for combo pieces or anything. So um, you're almost always going to have at least three lands, some cheap pieces of removal, and a few things that give your game some direction. And that's exactly what we have here. We're missing. Um, a mana rock and we're missing a mid-range beater um, but other than that uh, you know what is it three out of five or four out of six ain't bad um, so I, I, I was fine with it you know same opening hand as most opening hands with Aloro. the hand I did end up keeping had a reliquary tower an evolving wilds a mobilize which is an untap 
one of those untapped cards that I'm really happy to always oh. see early. Mm-hmm. Um, a Temple of Plenty, the Scryland, an Instill Energy, a Sun Petal Grove, and a Possessed Portal, which you guys didn't see for many, many hours. <laughs> it took it took a little while for that to come out. Yeah, that hand was still a little bit slow, but the Scryland made me feel better. And just knowing that I could reliably get to sell Vala when I needed her, and on the turn when I would have her, I probably would have maybe a little extra mana or something to do. On a scale of 1 to 10, how'd you feel about the opener? Uh, it was like 6 or a 7 because of the Scryland. Sure. And uh, my opening hand uh, was two forests, a cream of the crop, a forgotten cave, a crucible, um, a crucible of worlds, and <laughs> explosive vegetation, and a xenogod. Um, this is Zenigo's God. Um, yeah, we never saw that all game. I, I, yeah. I, I pitched it early. It was, okay. It just didn't feel like it was uh, going to. Was it sitting it. in your graveyard and we just yeah. didn't notice? Yeah. It? I um, didn't even look. <laughs> I think I think you made me discard it somewhere, but we'll get to there later. I mean, I kept the opening hand and I, and I just made a big note about this. Having hands that, that you can cast all your spells is, is extremely nice, so I, I'd rather keep something with uh, like three lands like this than uh, have that explosive um, start, or try for the explosive start and then end up keeping something four cards or no lands or something along those lines. So I was happy with my hand. It wasn't great. It wasn't it was five, maybe? Five? Okay, I was going to ask. <laughs> so turn one, I went first. Um, I drew an Argent Sphinx. And, you know, I said the only thing we were missing was a Mana Rock and a mid-range beater. Well, that was our mid-range beater. It's the one with Metal Craft that yeah. can blink out, right? It was, it was fine. Played a land. Past turn. I, I saw uh, a Priest of Titania off my Scry land that I played, and Priest of Titania is exactly what I wanted to be playing. What it means is that on the turn, when I'll be playing Sabala, I'll have at least one extra mana to play with. Yeah, a Priest of Titania gets out of hand real quick. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Sabal being an elf. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's like you built your deck with synergies. Hey. <laughs> uh, my, my turn one, um, I drew a Kodama's Reach, which is nice. Um, and I played the Forgotten Caves. Cool. Turn two for me, um, I drew another mid-range beater, Angelic Field Marshal. Uh, played a land, and I cast Sword of the Animus just because we had two mana available. Didn't want to waste it. Figured there weren't going to be any threats this early in the game, so I didn't need to hold up my answers. Uh, and I passed turn to Nick. Uh, on my second turn, I drew that priest that I had seen from the Scryland, and on that turn, I played a Mutavault to uh, play the priest. The Mutavault is just another creature, but it can become an elf right. for Priest of Titania. And also, in this deck where you're constantly untapping your whole board, all your creatures, Mutavault being a creature land, lets you just generate more mana. So I play a bunch of creature lands in this deck. Do you know off the top of your head how many effects you run that say untap all creatures? Or, like, uh, ish, anyway. In the realm of probably, like, 10 or 12. <laughs> uh, so some of them are abilities like Seedborn Muse, which is uh, obviously inc- include. And then there's cards like um, just Mobilize mm-hmm. or Vital- Vitalize or any of those cards are just, like, a sorcery right. that does it. But that sorcery can read, like, a Dark Ritual or something even greater than that. Add this much mana with this many mana dorks on it. On the field. My turn two, I played my forest, um, played cream of the crop, and passed. On turn three, uh, I drew a plains. That's fine, and I cast Sword of Vengeance. It's a very swordy game. I got two swords on the battlefield here, and you know, that, that's it. You know, hit my two drops, hit my three drops. Here, you know, I'm on curve. It's fine. Uh, on my turn three, I drew a Revel Arc, which was going to become an important combo piece much later in the game, uh, and then I played Salvala. Uh, I wanted to do more. I wanted to instill energy and mobilize and all those untap effects, but I figured if I waited one more turn, I could get, just get that much more explosive. And I didn't want to activate Selvala in a place where I wouldn't have much mana or ability to use the cards that I was drawing and let you guys draw them first. You thought it would be too scary for us if you put instill energy on Selvala and hadn't gotten any value Exactly. Out of it if I play the yeah. enchantment, give you guys some sort of uh, answer immediately, I'll just feel like I wasted a card. Well, and I probably would have jumped on that because it is a two for one. You know, if I hit totally. Salvala with the instill energy on it, you know, might as well slow you down in a three player game, exactly. particularly. My turn three, um, I drew a Sprouting Vines, which is the storm card that lets me just get a bunch of basic lands into my hand. Okay. Instead, I cast the Kodama's Reach. Uh, just fetched up a mountain in a forest, uh, played one, and had the other one in my hand. And I made a note here. I was starting to feel a little bit behind. This mm-hmm. has been a theme in all of the games we've played in Tandem Tactics. But I like playing that role. <laughs> you know, I like pitting my opponents against each other, making them identify each other as the threats. And in Aloro in particular, we're the only non-green deck at the table. Yeah. So it's not a surprise mm. that we're behind in the land race. And you have enough removal in our hand that... Um, it's okay. So I wrote that down. Anyway, turn four for me, um, I drew Temple of the False God, which is a great draw. We were beginning to run out of lands in our hands, and that's just, you know, a good land to draw 
mid-game, which is where we are here. And I cast the Angelic Field Marshal, and I made a note that the mana at this point was a little awkward for the Sphinx. I didn't have two blue sources, but that did not wind up being a problem uh, throughout the game. This turn is the turn when things started to get a little serious with Silvala. I drew... <laughs> a uh, little. <laughs> a little. I drew planes for the fourth dr for that draw, which was exactly what I was looking for. I was running kind of low, light on like uh, the colored mana I was looking for. I had the Mute Vault, and I had some other utility land in hand. It just wasn't what I needed, so Planes was great. I immediately parlayed to start the turn, uh, and I drew a Primordial Sage. You guys generated me some mana. Mm -hmm. And Primordial Sage was also a great draw because it was just going to help me get more resources ahead of you guys. I, I made a note that Nick needs dice to keep track of mana. Yep. And that's always a red flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, totally. <laughs> so uh, to continue that explosion of mana and cards, I put the instill energy on Silvala, uh, allowing me to untap her once on each of my turns. So I untapped her, generated more mana from you guys, played that planes I had found on the first draw, played a mobilize. Uh, I used that mobilized also on tapping Mutavault, like I was talking about that trick that I did before. Yep. I also untapped the Priest and Salvala, so tons of mana was in my pool. Yep. I used that to cast the Primordial Sage and a Revelark, uh, which immediately drew me a Citadel Hierophants, which is just another way to make more mana. So it was just draw cards, draw cards, play cards, draw cards, make mana. Yeah, I, I legitimately thought we might just lose the game on turn four. I, I thought uh, you might have, if you drew the right cards, you probably could have won. It's not so. impossible. With the Revelark in play and enough mana like that, it was not impossible to do that. To get a sense of how I was feeling, the exact quote from my notes is, could just fucking win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I eventually kind of sputtered out, but I did feel pretty good about my hand at this point, and all I was looking for was more on tap effects. I was just going to be drawing, like, four cards a turn, at least. Hopefully. I mean, and we were drawing all the while. It, it made it yeah. so much... Yeah. We're not even going to try, I think, to, you know, put up on the screen pictures of every card that, yeah. you know... <laughs> I did keep track of what you guys were drawing, though, because there's some cards that I saw were uh, specific answers to what I was doing. Right, right. On his turn, when he was making us draw, I had a Rampant Growth um, and a Praetor's Council, but I also had a Perilous Forays. It's not a combo, per se, with Omnath, two-card combo, but with uh, with some of the other cards in the deck, I can end up like, getting all the basics out of my deck. It's not a combo except it's, it's synergy really right? well it, it, it's sort of like what, what's the synergy with Thopter Foundry that lets you just for one mana poop out little life linking right. flyers it's, right. it's like value on an astronomical insane scale. value yeah. exactly yeah. Uh, on my turn four though um, I wanted to play Omnath next turn so I knew if I cast Explosive Vegetation and put a land into play um, I could have um, I, I can do this so I have a question for you Garrett at this point in the game did you have any way to mitigate Nick's board state? Or, I, I was thinking that turn order might have been really relevant here, because Nick, Nick was obviously the biggest threat at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, oh, Garrett's smart. He knows I'm playing Esper Colors and run lo lots of removal, and that I have to deal with Nick, and his turn comes before mine. So I felt like maybe you were just putting pressure on me, building up your resources by ramping, right, I mean, and forcing my hand to kill what Nick had going on. Yeah, that was exactly what I was sort of uh, watching develop. I saw Garrett ramping, and I was starting to get a little concerned because I knew Omnath was next turn. I was 100% sure of that. And I was kind of banking on maybe hoping that Dan would hold his hand and watch what Garrett does. But So, so my turn five, um, I drew an Arcane Sanctum, a land, that's fine. Um, I equipped Sword of the Animist, uh, and I swung with the Field Marshal to start ramping, which is crazy in a non-green deck to be able to ramp like that. that. Sword of the Animist is like my favorite card to come out in the last year. I cast and spun my Sensei's Divining Top that I drew off of one of your parlays, um, and I saw Baneslayer Angel, Path to Exile, and Sword of Feast and Famine. Um, I left Path to Exile on top, uh, leaving two mana available um, so that I could potentially path and rapid hybridization if I needed to, right? Pop the top, draw the right. path, mm -hmm. cast the path. Um, and then on my second main phase, before you had a chance to untap, um, I did cast rapid hybridization yep. on Selvala to get that two for one I was talking about earlier. Yep. And just slow you down a little bit because you, yeah. you, you, you could have just one. The instill energy felt like it had done its job, so I wasn't that sad to lose it. Yeah, no, it definitely replaced itself, yeah. and then some. And and I also made a note here that I'm always happy to see you tapping out for equipping. Yeah. I was just like, yes, yeah. turn a turn of reprieve. I can I can play safe. It, well, it, it's kind of a bet that we make against the table, thinking yeah. they're not going to win the game here. We yeah. don't need to break up a combo here. I don't think they're going to get there. If you did, I mean, my mistake. I would have lost. Mm -hmm. uh, so on my turn five, I drew Mage Right Stone, which is another untapped kind of card 
you did slow me down a little bit, so just cast the Major Stone, play Silvala again, and just kind of sit on that, hoping to play those Citadel Hierophants again next turn. My turn five, um, I made a note before I even started my turn that I was uh, that Nick got attacked, and I was like, he's the main target, he's getting targeted with all, all Dan's spells. Right. Uh, I drew an amulet, amulet of Vigor, which is one of those cards that combos with the Perilous Forays. Or my synergizes, synergizes extremely. <laughs> well, so it, it, I probably could have wiped one person out of the game right on right at the, on that turn. I cast my general and I just passed. And then I used the one mana that I did have up. I, I hadn't tapped out entirely, Nick. I did have a, a path to exile available to me. Right. I didn't necessarily know that, but I wasn't particularly worried. But that probably would have thrown a bigger wrench in. My yeah, but blue and black have answers for one mana at instant That's speed. Uh, but regardless, I, I used that one mana to top instead of sword something. Yeah. Um, and I put the sword of feast and famine. Um, I set that up as my next draw for turn. So turn six, draw Sword of Feast and Famine, cast the Sword of Feast and Famine, equip the Angel with the Sword of Feast and Famine, and the Sword of Vengeance, which <laughs> is kind of hilarious flavor. She's holding, uh, you know, three swords at this point. I wrote swords mm -hmm. galore in my... Uh... <laughs> well, and in her art, she also has, like, a little spear <laughs> thing. So if you just, this Angel is just, like, our hands full with... <laughs> she's like, sword on each end of the spear. Also. She's like Wolverine. <laughs> uh, I swung at Nick again. Uh, after I asked you at this point, are you going to block? Because you, you had a blocker available, and I wanted to make sure I got the um, trigger. You probably shouldn't have answered me. I, I, I'm never afraid to open my mouth and ask a question, even if it, you know, yeah. in, in that situation tips my hand. Um, just leaning on the, the human tendency to just be honest. Yep. You know, you, humans, I'm a pretty honest guy. You, my, you're you're my honest guy in real life, you yeah. know? And <laughs> so in, in so the game of magic... you're taking advantage of me. So I, you know, I, I made a note later in this game that I'm a bad person. For, for, so <laughs> well, I could have told you that. I will. I, I will... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I tried to stab Garrett in the back later, but I, I just, we'll <laughs> talk about that later. So I did swing at Nick after he was honest with me saying he wouldn't block. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> and he didn't. He took eight damage, and I got to untap my lands uh, with the sword, and so I, I, I cast Aloro. And I passed turn, leaving up three mana. And Aloro was important because yeah. my angel has the lieutenant ability, right? Uh -huh. So all my, all my crap got better. The damage didn't particularly bother me. It was more like the untapped mana that you immediately tapped for Aloro, and then I was like, oh, all right. Back to... Well, if you had told me you would block, even yeah. if you lied to me about it, then I just would have swung at Garrett because he didn't have a blocker in the I wouldn't lie to you. at that point. Yeah. Uh, my draw six, uh, I think I drew Tranquil Thicket. I immediately tapped Silvala, uh, drew a Seedborn, which was really great to see. It's um, never a bad thing to see. Yeah. I saw you had a Reigns of Power, which I was kind of like... Off of parlay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it just it didn't super bother me because there's times when I can just win out of nowhere and it's not through combat damage. So it's not really... A, the Reigns of Power wasn't worrying to me. And sometimes it's a little awkward on my end if I've already built a big board of mid-range fatties. I don't want to trade yep. creatures with you. Uh, so it, it, in this game, Reigns of Power was a potential fog, really. I, I just kept tapping and untapping. Uh, some of the major things that I did end up getting were a, a Karmic Guide, which is the second piece to the Ray uh combo. And I saw you guys were just drawing more answers. You had an Utter End uh, character something. I wonder why this game went long. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I played the Signal Hier uh, Hierophants. I played some more other creatures. Just kept drawing more creatures and more mana dorks, and it just filled up my board. I cycled the Tranquil Thicket at the end of all of that and drew into a Dryad's Caress. That untapped my whole board and just let me do even more. So I doubled my board and then doubled it again. I responded to your Dryad's Caress by activating my top. Yeah. Just because, you know, I didn't want you to keep going. You know, it is, I, I thought you were beginning to run out of gas and instead you were just <laughs> reloading. And I saw two lands and a Dawn Charm. So I put the Dawn Charm on top. And sat on that. At this point, I was really aware of how high up, like how much farther above you guys I was, and how much you were probably going to start pulling me back down to earth. Yeah. yeah. So I was expecting something bad to happen. This... I really, I wrote in my notes before you even did it that the last thing I want to see is a sight rift. And you know. <laughs> well, and I wrote down um, casting Aloro beginning to feel like a mistake <laughs> should have held up mystical teachings. Yeah. To get. Because I had enough mana, if I hadn't cast Laura to, um, what did I have? I had nine mana available, so yeah. I could have, you know, for four done that and had 
the five mana left up. Anyways, I just ended my turn with a huge board and making myself look like a big threat and wanted to see what you guys would do to me. Yeah, and, and you had been gaining life from Parlay, so yep. you were at 50, and I had been gaining life from Aloro, so I'm at 50, yep. and Garrett hasn't been touched, he's still at 40. Yep. We're drawing all of the answers in the world. Yeah, this is this game isn't about to end anytime soon. Things were escalating. Yeah. Well, On my turn, uh, six, um, I he would, he would actually attack Nick again, so I knew I wasn't the biggest threat, and you both were tapped out at this point. I never uh, underestimate a gruel deck, though, and your right. ability to just explode out of nowhere. Exactly. So I, I knew that the Dawn Charm was on top. <laughs> right, but you knew the Dawn, the Dawn Charm was on top, but you were tapped out at this point. Either you had one man open, or you were tapped completely out, I believe, uh, because this turn I was able to... You may to, be right about that. Because uh, this turn I was able to play the Amulet of Vigor I drew last turn, and the Perilous Forays, and at this point I put 14 lands into play, <laughs> uh, and had 14 <laughs> lightning bolts. W walk us through the interaction just, so, just a little more okay, all right, so deliberately. Uh, with Omnath in play, he has a landfall ability, and right. Perilous Forays says if I sacrifice a creature... Um, I can put a land into play. Right. Tapped. Yes. But with the Amulet of Vigor, it <laughs> untaps it. So now I sacrifice one of Amas Elementals to put a land into play, making another Elemental, but the land that came into play untapped, so I can use it to do this process again and again yep. until I have no more lands in my deck. Yeah, and you just paid one to get a Lightning Bolt and a land in play. Yes. And so I... <laughs> At the, I, I wrote down, WTF is this game? <laughs> you were getting every land out of your deck on turn, what was it, six? Yeah. I mean, that, that's impressive even if you're not dismantling someone's board doing it. Yep, so. exactly. It was pretty great. And, and at this point, I, I could have killed one of you guys, or I could have just um, wiped out Nick's board, which is what I chose to do. Yep. Um, and, I, and I knocked out most of his elves, I knocked out most of the things that... Um, made mana on his side. The thing that I was thankful for, though, is that I had a couple of those uh, shroudy elves. I had Eldamri, Lord of Leaves, to protect my board for a while, so you had to kind of like do things in order to take exactly. out all the pieces, leaving you with some decisions to make. And I actually uh, made a mistake. I should have killed the um, Revelark yep. first, mm -hmm. but I, and I killed it second, meaning, or second or third, meaning I had to kill the elves I Right, it brought back the shroudy so. guys, which was part of like... Yeah the thing I was banking on, just yeah. kind of keeping things safe. Except it really wasn't that big of a deal, yeah, because right. you didn't wind up getting every single land out of your deck, either. Because exactly. you, you mentioned you were trying to play around an Armageddon. Yes, and I, and I even had this written down, I was like, if an Armageddon comes down, I'm fucked. And we knew that we know that Nick runs an Armageddon it, in his yeah. deck. Yeah. Yes. So I, and they ended up playing Crucible of Worlds too. So if, if an Armageddon did come down, I could just start rebuilding my board hopefully faster than anybody else. Yeah. 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 You stopped at 17 lands in play. So <laughs> I, I, I made you count because <laughs> I need to know these things. Yeah. While I was doing this, Nick was producing mana into his Omnath. So it was my Ragey Omnath versus the uh, oh, Locusy yeah. Omnath. Have we even mentioned that you cast an Omnath? No, oh, I don't it's think we just have. something that happened in the middle of that last turn. Yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick's turn. I can't count all the king things that I played that turn. Drawing so many cards, casting so many things. Yeah, just if, if you can think of a card, just assume it was on Nick's board, pretty much. Uh, on my turn seven, it's the first upkeep where Alora was actually in play, so I paid for the trigger and had my own little you know, kind of personal howling mine. I drew Talisman of Domination and a Hunted Lamasu. I'm also filtering my draws with Sensei's Divining Top, so I, I had done that. Uh, cast the Talisman, uh, cast the Argent Sphinx, I equipped Sword of Vengeance to the Sphinx, I moved to combat. Uh, I swung with my Field Marshal and my Sphinx, there were no blocks, I got to tutor for a land with the Sword of the Animist, and I untapped my lands with the Sword of Feast and Famine. Uh, I spun the top, and I thought I was going to hold mana up for answers here, but with the top I saw a Clever Impersonator. So instead, pop the top and cast Clever Impersonator, assuming you guys weren't running counter spells. When it entered the battlefield, it was a Seedborn Muse, of course. Um, Oops. <laughs> I also cast uh, my Hunted Lamasu because I figured I was going to get an untap so I didn't need to leave anything up, and I gave Garrett the 4-4 token. And then, with my last two mana, I equipped the Sword of Feast and Famine to my Seedborn Muse just to give it protection from green, because that was you know, very That's relevant color, against, yeah. against two green decks. Yeah, Omnath couldn't bolt it. Yeah, exactly. I was so afraid of a Psych Rift that I just w didn't even want to think about using Selvala. I had the option to use her maybe three or four times on each of your turns, and I just started calling it quits when I realized I didn't want... I was in such a strong position, I just didn't want to be giving you guys things. Right, right. After all that, uh, you know, the giant boards that I had built up, the last thing I really felt like I needed to do was kind of keep you guys from getting any more benefits out of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So first I played an Abundance, which lets me filter my draws, yeah. make sure I always draw what I want to be drawing. 
And then after that, I played this card called Possess Portal. And the way that these cards both interact is that they're both replacement effects for a draw. A Possess Portal will stop a player from drawing a card. But because I have an abundance, I get to choose, instead of drawing, to replace that draw with a put a non-land or a land type card in my hand. Yeah. What Selvala then lets you do is see what's on top, and before you draw it, their draw gets replaced with a draw, a non-land, or a land. So I can take what's on top or get something else. And Garrett was really confused as to why I wasn't interrupting this. Because he knew I had an utter end in my hand. Because yeah. we saw it from the parlay. Uh, and I wrote, you know, I'm just letting this happen because I have enough mana to, you know, mystical teachings for a cyclonic rift and yeah. fire off the psych rift with overload. The thing I my, don't want. But my problem with this entire turn was we're sitting here unable to draw cards... And and he and Nick's just getting this immediate huge advantage, even with the Psych Rift. Yeah. He got to draw like fifteen cards this turn. Yeah. And we just sat there and, and watched, and he got two extra mana every single time. Right. Um, the other. To Sovala. The other cool interaction is once I know what's on top of both of you guys' libraries. I saw you put the top back on yeah. top of your library, which was great for me. It and let me just lock what's on top. My logic was, I'm still afraid of Garrett. You know, I, I was scared of a super explosive turn from you and didn't want you to be getting gas. And I knew that Nick would be super blown out by oh, yeah. uh, Psych Rift um, or any other board wipe that I might have hit. So, I, you know, you're playing with fire no matter what you do. You know, it, I, you could ar I can see the argument. I can see where maybe someone might not think it was the right line of play. But um, I, was, I was content to let Nick just make mana, draw cards, cast yeah. spells, make mana, draw cards, cast spells, build a big board, and then just... Boom, Psych Rift. Well, the nice thing also is that at this point, I had drawn into the last piece of the Revel Art combo, Mirror Entity. I was holding those in hand just in case, you know, there was some sort of board wipe. I wasn't going to play the Karmic Guide or Mirror Entity at this point. If everything gets bounced, hopefully what happens is you guys spend all your mana taking care of my stuff, and then I just drop Karmic Guide and Mirror Entity, and boom, yeah. game's over. I wrote, Nick is just having the time of his life playing it Solitaire. It was great. You, you, you parlayed, I think, six times. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and also, just to mention, he's just because he's parlaying and he's drawing six cards there, he's also, every time he casts a creature, he's drawing cards and he's getting mana off of the Sovala three mana each turn. Yeah, who needs enchantresses, right, exactly. Garrett? He's, he was doing a better job than I was. Yeah, right. Armorial Sage does work. Yeah, yeah, it does. So, end step, I tutored for and yeah. cast an overloaded cyclonic rift. It was and, just a matter of time. And I, I, I wrote, might have a path to victory. Now, it was the first time in the game where I thought, I could I could pull this one out. Yeah. Uh, now, this right here was, I think, a misplay on your part, though, Dan. You do. Um, because I think you could have waited till the end of my turn to do that. Well, I didn't want you to have Omnath, or at least, at least I wanted you to have to spend mana to recast Omnath, but I, I, I may be wrong. Well, I, but even so, you, I have... I, I have mana to recast on that. I use my mana to recast on that. I guess you did but have like 17, 20. I, 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 had, I had 17 or 18 mana at this point, um, so I could have recast them at that point, but I also lose a draw as well because he's got um, the, possessed the, the possessed portal out. Sure. So if you waited till the end, the, the end of my turn you uh, and you Psychonic Rift End, then I discard, but where Nick didn't have to because he had a Reliquary Tower out. Sure, um, I, I might have done a better job of considering the colors you were playing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my logic was you were tapped out more yeah. or less, and I wanted to take advantage of that right. window. Um, but I guess in red green, what are you gonna do? You know, right. like pyroblast me. So the beginning of my turn seven, um, I drew the where An where ancients tread off the top of my library. Yeah, and I ended up casting where ancients tread. Then I cast Omnath. And I responded to and Omnath. I, and exactly, and you responded to Omnath. Because I was the only one with a board. It was very clear that you were going to use Wear Ancient's Tread to dismantle that. So right. I, I used my utter end on Wear Ancient's Tread. Yeah. Right, and then, then you path my Omnath. And then I played Perilous Forays, and I, that, that's what I had in play at the end of turn 7. I, I responded to your cast of Perilous for, exactly. Forays by casting Mystical Teachings with Flashback from the Graveyard. And then with, I think, the one man I had left, I yeah. used a path that I tutored for on Omnath. I wasn't going to let you dismantle my board right then yeah, and there. Yeah, I get oh. it, I get it. Well, I think it became a, a matter of you trying to answer everything that both of us were doing, and it just, you trying to keep ahead of two players who were both kind of going out of control. Well, in right. fairness, I, I, you I, did came, well. I came close. Yeah. You did it well. <laughs> I, I, I knew I had a pretty good draw engine and tons of resources. I was ramping every turn when I attacked. You know, I, yeah. If anyone could have done it. So on turn eight, um, again, I paid for Aloros Trigger. I drew two cards, a land, and my Sensei's Divining Top again, randomly. Uh, it had been shuffled back in. I played a Blighted Cataract, uh, and I cracked it to draw two cards. I drew a Reliquary Tower and a Command Tower. Both my towers, kind of weird. I swung in with everything at Nick, 
Uh, and that, he took 22 damage. You had a one protection from blue, like, flying thing. Yeah. That prevented one of the trample damage. One damage. Uh, so you drop down to 34, in parentheses, <laughs> I wrote stupid parlay. <laughs> yeah, Should've... I definitely gained a lot of life yeah, after all those untaps. Should have been at, like, 10. Then I untapped everything with the Sword of Feast and Famine trigger, and equipped everything to Aloro, beginning to think that maybe commander damage was the path of least resistance. Yep. And maybe, if I had the foresight to, you know, realize that before combat, I might have done it that very turn. But yeah, I was... had you done that... I would have been in a much scarier spot. I would have felt more uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I was you know, flying by the seat of my pants. I definitely did not play perfectly optimally. Then I spun the top, and I left Arcane Denial on top of my library so that I could you know, grab right. it if I felt I needed it. And that was it. That's my turn. Before my turn started, I had already started making the plans for how I was going to end up comboing out. Uh, I had the combo in my hand with the Rebel Arc and the Mirror Entity. And the well, and we had seen... All of the pieces, you guys except have seen all the pieces except how I was going to beat you. Well, except for the oh right, so we, we, we'd seen the mirror entity too, right? Yeah, yeah. You had seen me draw them because abundance makes you draw them face up. Yeah, right. I just wasn't sure if you guys knew the line I was going to be using yet to sell Bala you out with abundance and possess portal. I knew you'd eventually figure it out. I just didn't wasn't exactly sure when it was going to happen. I just assumed that you. Yeah. I mean, it, that's the easiest part of that combo. Yeah, finding an out, finding something to do with yeah. it. But I knew that you guys were afraid enough to probably try and stop me somehow, yeah. somewhere. The next turn it was just rebuilding. Uh, I had an exploration, a soul ring, a bunch of mana dorks. I just dumped it all out of my hand and tried to cast Selvala. And you were going really quick. I had to be like, stop! <laughs> well, I had been waiting for you guys to finish your turn, so I had all the cards I was going to play. I just like slammed them all on the table because I was like, all right, turn's done. Yeah, but you, then we had to back up for a second. Yeah, you had it really mapped out to your credit. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did tap my top to draw the Arcane Denial to counter your Selvala because mm -hmm. I, could, I couldn't have that with the... Uh, what, what is it that gives it... Uh, the haste. elixir of uh, a thousand year elixir. A thousand year yeah. elixir, right. Yeah, right. with that, I was able to allow Solala to die with Mirror Entity, and then just keep bringing her back, tapping her, letting her die, bring her back, tapping her. All that will just end up meaning we all draw our libraries. Yeah, I, I couldn't let that yeah. begin to happen. After the Arcane Denial, I had to make a choice of whether to leave her in the command zone or put her in the graveyard. And since I had the Karmic Guide and the Mirror Entity in hand, I really was just trying to cast two spells and win the game. I left the, the combo in your eyes, in your faces, so you could all see it and look at it. But I hoped, you know, maybe I'd be able to avoid counter spells or something. Yeah. So I started to get kind of scared about both of your boards. Um, so I knew that I had to start finding answers in my deck. Um, so I played Kavu Lair this turn mm -hmm. um, and then recast Omnath. But I also had Cream of the Crop. So what I got to do is I get to look at the top five cards or power of my creature's cards at the top of my library and then draw them. So I cast Omnath, played a land, I got to, and I kept drawing cards, and I ended up drawing um, K-Grip, I drew Chaos Warp, I, I just started stocking my hand full of these answers to what you guys were doing. Just any way for me to interact with you at this point. And in green-red, that's impressive. There, there aren't that many instant yeah. speed answers. I also had five lands in my deck at this point, so I had five lightning bolts as well. And I was happy to see the Kavu Lair because I had Metalcraft for my Argent Sphinx. Mm -hmm. So I was basically able to draw yeah, an extra card yeah. every turn. Yep. Uh, so I, I did that. I blinked yeah. it at the end of your second main phase and came back to your end step and uh, drew an extra card. And then on turn nine, paid for Loro's trigger again, so I drew two more cards. A Rogue's Gloves, which tells, helps me draw more cards. And the Pristine Talisman, which helps me draw more cards with Loro also. Yep, yep. So I had lots of little ways to, especially with the Seedborn Muse copy I had on, in play, I was feeling pretty good about outpacing you guys. I mean, you had Selvala, but that also draws me cards. So yep. uh, I cast the Talisman, I drew cards, I dropped the Rogue's Gloves, I dropped the Sensei's Top, I moved to combat, I swung uh, at Nick, with a, quote, blinged out Aloro, lots of equipment to, attached to him. That puts you at 23 um, and, life. Yeah, yeah and, and you had taken 15 commander. Yeah, I knew I was dead uh, next turn unless I had something to just sit there and block behind. Yeah. And I also swung in the air at Garrett uh, for 14, but right. then you, so, you, you had a response. So yeah. then this is where I just, I, I had these lightning bolts kind of sitting in my pocket. So instead of taking 14, I killed his, um, his angel. Um, that gives all those guys plus two, plus two. Yeah, and that might have been an oversight on my part. I just... <laughs> this game had gone on a long time, and I was beginning to make mistakes. I think I wrote, I'm lazy, and it's about time I just try and end it. <laughs> I think we were all feeling that way. Yeah. I think we're all feeling that way about this podcast right now, almost. Yeah, really. <laughs> Let's just hurry through this. And... Yeah. No, no, we gotta, we gotta do it right. No, I agree, I agree. I say as executive uh, producer and editor, <laughs> we <sure>. must! <laughs> on my turn, I just went for it. Played Mirror Entity, looked around, 
uh, felt really uncertain about the counter spells and answers, so I played in abundance just for no good reason. To try to just get a response to yeah. that. Yeah, because, I mean, it, does, it is part of the Selvala combo because it's what keeps me alive while you guys are drawing your libraries. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyways, then I played the Chromic Guide. And and that, that, that's what sets the combo off. That's what sets that, everything That's what starts motion. it. Yeah. Yep. And this is where, I previewed this earlier, this is where I actually wrote down, I'm a bad person. <laughs> I kind of bluffed to Garrett that I didn't have a response. At this point, I, I used two lightning bolts on Dan, so that meaning I had three left in my library. I used one to kill his, um, the, the, uh, mirror. the mirror entity at this point. Before right. the actual a- Initially, I felt kind of bad, but I was like, well, I really wouldn't have even had mana to save it anyway. You could have just gotten a second bolt. Right. Uh, but... Yeah, I still felt like I misplayed. Well, and the reason I wrote I'm a bad person is because the answer that I did have in my hand to your mirror entity, as soon as Garrett decided he was going to answer it instead, I was like, well, this answer is then going straight at Garrett. I don't know that it wound up shaking out that way, but uh, that was my that was the idea <laughs> yeah. when I wrote that down. I, I like, felt bad, but I was going to try to win. Thanks for yeah. saving me. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Also, to note on these, every single time I lightning bolt one of their guys, I scry five, or I look at the top five cards in my library and I put another card in my hand, so I'm just getting more and more value. I had the Karmic Guide, I brought the Rebel Art back in play, and now I was kind of sitting in an awkward spot where I had to try and find a way to kill my guys to then get them back. And right. it was just like, the combo was weirdly half on on the board and half in the graveyard. I think we all kind of felt that way. We weren't all going for combos, obviously. Yeah. But this was like the closest three-way match. Yeah, it felt like we were all strangling each other with one hand right. like a triangle. Well, like and by this point in the game, we were all one turn away exactly. from knocking each other out. It was just this like three-way Mexican standoff of like, totally. who's going to get there first? Like, who, who's going to find this really narrow window? And it was like gonna... the good, the bad, and the ugly. It felt like the, the standoff. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, this turn, I cast the greater good. Um, which then was responded to. Right, and oh, so that's when I did use my answer. Right. I, I did cast Oblation exactly. on Omnath there. I, I think that's justified. Greater good is just too yeah. greatly good. You you Oblationed Omnath, which I just recast Omnath. Um, as you do. <laughs> yeah, as I do. <laughs> For more um, mana, though, you could have spent that mana on scarier things, I assume. I held priority when you cast yes. Omnath, because I was thinking if I can draw into a counter spell and then counter this... Uh, I felt like I was in a pretty good position to maybe knock both of you out on my next combat step, or at least knock one of you out and have the resources in hand to just play a lopsided one-on-one game. So I cast Sphinx's Revelation for five, plus an Aloro trigger, so I was really drawing six, just making sure you guys lose a life. I did like that. Uh, And I left three mana open. Yeah, I, I do think that I misplayed before this. I had this Sphinx's Revelation in my hand, and I maybe just should have left all of my mana up or fired it off earlier because I also had the Seedborn Muse. I could have done that at the end of Nick's turn and gotten a lot more. Um, yeah. But I didn't. And with that in mind, I think in this moment, firing it off yeah, is arguably the right play. I whiffed and Omnath did resolve and yep. felt a little felt a little naked then. <laughs> yeah. I got uh, Fires of Yamavaya out, um, which gave all my guys haste. And then I was able to swing at you, Dan, uh, for 15 this turn. You killed one of my guys, giving me one lightning bolt. And then I, I think I had one more forest in my library at this point, so I used the second one to lightning bolt your Seedborn Muse. And honestly, I think going for the Seedborn Muse was a mistake. I was at a, I was at a point in the game where I wasn't even doing anything during your turns with the mana that I had untapped with it. Yeah. I think going for one of my beaters, I, I would have been right. more... <laughs> Uh, offended yeah. by that, right? The, the Seed Bar Muse had, had done its work already, and I, I'd fired off most of my you know, instant speed stuff. It's worth noting, at this point in the game, I was at 61 life, yeah. Nick was at 20, and Garrett was at 23. So my fatties on board were feeling like you know oh, yeah. a legitimate threat. Well, you, you were at 61 before I attacked. After I attacked, I think you took 5 or 10. Yeah, I think I went to yeah. 55 or 54, yeah. yeah. So this is turn 10. Dan's last turn. Oh, well, well, this is all, all of our last turns. <laughs> the last turn of the game. Who's going to win? We, we did pretty good not telling anybody who's going to win this game. Yeah, isn't that amazing? We're talking about the last turn, and even here, it's not clear. Clear. I drew, you know, with Aloro, two draws, uh, a Dream Fracture and a Fire Shrieker. I think I misplayed. I think I misplayed pretty really? hard. Totally. I, I should have just cast the Fire Shrieker yeah. and the... Um, uh, uh, I had a Sturmgeist in my hand um, from the Sphinx's Revelation. Uh-huh. A- and Sturmgeist was huge. I did ultimately wind up casting um, the Sturmgeist, but I was thinking, you had a Revel Arc and a Karmic Guide on board, just no sack outlet. Ready to, uh, ready to die. You were at 15 commander damage uh-huh. from Aloro. Yep. I had the Sword of Feast and Famine equipped 
to Aloro, giving him protection from all of your other potential blockers. Just but my two white guys. Yeah, those two, two, two <laughs> white guys. <laughs> Ready to die. It took me so long to come up with the play here, and I, I, I'm sure I messed it up. I don't know how I messed it up, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm sure there was something better. Can I interject? Sure. There's one line that you did miss. Uh, the karmic guide has pro black, so it would not have no, died. No, I saw that. I saw that. Oh. It would have survived. You would have oh. killed my rebel arc. And see, I th- I was not going to tell you this until now because had I said it in game, you would oh, have just sh- swung oh. and killed me. Oh my god! The re- you putting it on Sturmgeist gave me the only out. Doing that was what the only reason I could have potentially won. Oh, I punted hard. Yes, you did, and I didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I mean I I even thought about the protection from black, but I just didn't think about it not killing the karmic guide. I don't. Wow, I'm an idiot. Anyway, is this, is this the fir- a first a revelation mid podcast? Yes, yes, it is. This is. Yes, and you can hear it in his voice too, which is amazing. <laughs> I wish you could see it on his face, guys. Oh. Yeah, I was holding this for the entire for the whole podcast. I well, knew you missed it. Okay, so I, I don't know that I would have won anyway because I, I could have. It was a guaranteed kill for on me. Right, right. I, I would have saved a lot of mana. So anyway, I neglected to consider that. Uh, sorry, viewers. <laughs> no, don't. <it's, laughs> I'm I'm sorry to the lis- listeners, viewers for. Failing them. No, this is good. We're all learning here. I transmuted Clutch of the Undercity. Yep. I didn't I didn't know what was left in my library, but I thought maybe there's a four drop that I'm not thinking of that could somehow answer the Revelark and Karmic Guide at once. I had drawn so many cards over the course of the game, there was literally only one four drop left in the deck at all. Not not just instant speed answers, but four drop creatures, four drop instants, anything. It was an aetherize. It did nothing for me in this situation. So you know, whatever. That was my big mistake, was transmuting yeah. that. That that tied up Having three that mana. Three mana that would have been very critical. Yep. So then I drew with my talisman, which is what I should have done instead of transmuting, because I drew an Ulamog, which would have dealt with <laughs> the Karmic Guide of Revelark in the way that I yeah. needed him to, <laughs> and I still would have had enough mana to equip in such a way that I could have swung at you for lethal. But because I transmuted Clutch of the Undercity, <laughs> I didn't have enough mana. I had ten mana left at this point. So I knew that if I attacked you, you would double block, and you would go infinite with your Karmic Guide and Revelark and Mirror Entity. I had a Fire Shrieker in my hand, but that presented this super weird situation where you would have been able to win the game between first strike damage and regular combat damage. That's the only way I like to go infinite. <laughs> and, and, and the regular combat damage would have killed you. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like the most infuriating goddamn thing. Yeah, that's why I like first strike damage, actually. It just gives me more time to kill you guys. I cast my Sturmgeist. I equipped Swords of the Animist and the Sword of Vengeance, which was awkward. I, I wanted to equip the Sword of Feast and Fam into it, but then Aloro wouldn't have had six power, which yep. would have been enough to kill you with commander damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lots of conundrums. Oh, it, it's like, you think that one damage doesn't matter on turn four, but it really does. Yeah. So I swung at you with everything then. I, my Sturmgeist was a 22-20 flyer yeah. with First Strike, Trample, Vigil, all that. And this is where politics came into play. Yes. Right, well, I think I think Garrett just made a good play. So, Garrett made a great play. So at this point, I still had the Chaos Warp in my hand, and I knew that I, like, I wanted to try and win on the next turn, because the way that Dan equipped his swords... He wouldn't get the untap trigger if I died on if, first strike. Exactly, if if uh, Nick died on first this, strike. This this is so brilliant. <laughs> I chaos warped the the two blo- one of the two blockers, making it lethal on Nick for the you know, first strike damage. Right. So yeah, Garrett cast a chaos warp on you know I think the Revelark Karmic or Karmic Karmic Karmic. Yeah. so that my Sturmgeist with trample was powerful enough <laughs> to, to kill me on first strike. Yeah, to kill Nick on first strike damage. What that means is that my Aloro, which is equipped with Sword of Feast and Famine but doesn't have first strike, wouldn't connect. And I wouldn't get the Sword of Feast and Famine trigger and I'd be stuck tapped out. Yeah. And it's just Garrett's turn with Nick dead and me tapped out. I died with a smile on my face knowing <laughs> that this was what was happening. I, 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 I punted so hard on so many levels in so many ways. That last turn was a really tough one. My, my tenth turn was easy. I just... Uh, Got to play my Storm Cauldron, t- tapped all my lands, put them back into my hand, then uh, with the mana bonds, put them back onto play. Got 22 triggers, so I got 22 five fives, and then 22 lightning bolts, t- and then 22 lightning bolts. Essentially, essentially, it's like you identified the smallest possible window in the <laughs> yep. entire game of Magic. The only smaller window in terms of timing, would be using a mana ability in response to split second. <laughs> That's the only smaller timing window than the window between first strike and regular combat damage. Because mm-hmm. like, first strike isn't even a real step. <laughs> like, it doesn't happen every turn. It just happens when it's relevant. And that you 
pounced on that yep. is I mean you 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 earned the win you know the, totally. the, the more I'm sitting here talking about it the, the more the more mad at myself I feel first of all <laughs> the more and happy I feel having led to your death I Derek's punted part. and you returned it for a touchdown anyways it was a wild game yeah, right? I, I'm at a loss for words it, it was, uh, <laughs> that's rare for me <laughs> there are <laughs> schemes within schemes well th- thank you Nick for Joining us and this complicating week. Complicating things. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, you, you, it, things didn't get simpler, but that's not a bad thing. Oh, I had a, I had a great time. This is actually Salvala's maiden voyage. I've never played the deck before tonight with you guys. Full disclosure, we did play a couple warm-up games. Yeah, I really did not know how to even use the machine that I had constructed. Right. I had, like, it was like a wild hog, and it was like <laughs> it was like threatening to like accelerate out of my hands, and I kind of didn't know when I was supposed to be playing certain <laughs> things. So it really needed a couple of warm-up games. I play with Nick pretty frequently, and it's it's very in character for you. Yeah. You you love these kind of wily games that take kind of long solitaireish turns and like use cards that no one's heard of before. But yeah, and, it's my and, and, butter. and you always have super narrow answers to oddly specific problems. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> thing. It's really weird. <laughs> if you have a hundred cards that answer a hundred strange, different little problems, you'll just make amazing plays, even if you don't win. <laughs> well, true. I, 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 I have to say, I'm having more fun talking about the last turn than I had during the last turn. <laughs> uh, Me too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode of Tandem Tactics. Uh, let us know what you think about it. If you've been enjoying the stuff on Pogobat Gaming recently, um, consider subscribing. Consider contributing on Patreon. Just a dollar a month goes a long way towards keeping this whole thing sustainable. And um, until next time, we're going to do another one of these probably in two weeks. I think. Uh, great. I, got a, I got a spicy one for uh, two Ooh, weeks from a now. spicy meatball. I'm excited. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do in two weeks. I might try to throw some five color together. Or maybe I'll play Crewface. Maybe I'll just stick with what I know. I'm pretty. Yeah. I got some classes. I'm pretty busy. I don't know if I'll have time to build a new deck. But <laughs> yeah. until next time, thanks. Yeah. Have a good one. <laughs>